Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Josh and I am the proud owner of a 79 Corvette. In today's video, I have a very special installation for you guys. We're gonna go ahead and install a aftermarket radio on the car. Now, full disclosure, my car has a radio right now, the original radio, which works pretty well, but I have been having a couple of issues. I added a couple of new speakers and so the, the radio is not giving me the output that I want. It also sounds very distorted. So I wanna change it. I bought a cheap radio from Amazon, one of those $40 radios. And uh, I think it's gonna make a good deal. My only concern is the cabling and wiring situation. I wanna be able that it's fairly done uh, properly and that there's no exposed cables or anything. I'm assuming that there's gonna be a couple of cuts. With that being said, I am planning on taking about three to four hours doing this. I do have to cut into the vessel to make sure that the radio fits properly as the radio that I bought is not the retrofitted radio for this car. It's just an aftermarket radio, which I've seen in a ton of different Corvettes. So if you guys are interested in watching this video, stay with me. If not, feel free to watch all my other videos, like and subscribe and comment below with your questions. To start off, I just wanted to show you guys the radio quickly and some of the things that it comes with. This is a Boss 200 watt audio system. It comes with a remote control, detachable face, and I figured for $40, you can't beat that. And also I wasn't trying to spend $400 on a retrofit uh, stereo. So I decided to go with this cheaper option. I also went ahead and bought something that was completely black with little to no accents or colors or anything because I wanted to be uh, kind of mindful of the fact that I'm adding a, a aftermarket radio into a dash that's 40 years old. So I didn't want to mismatch. Now, to start off, we have the bezel. We do have the radio here, which is extremely little compared to the old one. And we have a ton of different cables that we're gonna be using for this installation. Aside from that, that's pretty much it. It comes with the remote control. You have your brackets to install. I'm not sure how to install these brackets, but we'll try to figure out. If not, I may just leave it as it is. But I wanna point out the size of the radio. I mean, this thing is little. It's also not heavy at all and uh, it looks really nice. I think it's gonna fit perfectly. And like I said, it's very clicky, doesn't have a lot of things, detachable face. Now in this portion of the video, my microphone decided to just die again. I, I really need to get a new microphone. But anyways, I was disconnecting the cables, disconnected the battery, took the battery out, uh, simply because I figured I would clean the compartment where the battery was at. I was actually prepping it for insulation, but the paper didn't get here in time. So I just wanted to vacuum it and cleaned everything around it, make sure that there was no debris or dust or anything. I also disconnect the battery tender, as you guys can tell, I keep it in the car to make sure that the car is charged when not, when not in use. Uh, but yeah, pretty simple job. Great news guys, uh, something that I didn't know <laughs> was in the battery compartment is when I was cleaning the battery compartment, as you guys can tell, I cleaned it as well as I could. I found this little pull lever and I have been looking to buy this for a couple of weeks now. This pertains to the pull uh, for the cover, the, the trunk cover. And I was planning on buying it because they do break. And luckily me, this one's in one piece, not broken, it all works. So I'm gonna go ahead and install that as well. So to start off with the radio, as you guys can tell, I've already taken some of the buttons of the radio, but I wanna point out the screws that you have to take off. What essentially you need to do is take off two screws that are right up top, two on the side, and then you're gonna take two that are holding the radio in place. They're very small, very thin. And then you're also, before removing the whole thing, you're gonna take two screws that are right under, one on the footwell of the passenger and one of the driver's footwell. These are very easy to take off. You have to remove the panels, but you know, it shouldn't take you too long to remove them. After that, you'll be able to fully detach the bezel from the car. And I just wanna quickly point out the small screws that are in between the radio and the buttons. You have to take those off before removing anything else. All right, so once you're done removing all the screws and you're making sure that everything's ready to go, you are going to go ahead and pull gently towards you pretty much without damaging anything. You just wanna make sure that all the screws are off and then you can start pulling. As you can tell, this is a very straightforward. Both parts are separate. So the part where the shifter is at and the part where the gauges are at is a separate uh, part. So you don't have to worry about the bottom part to remove or anything. Just make sure that those bottom screws are completely taken off. 
You also want to go ahead and remove the dome light or the courtesy light. Just fairly easy. There's just a regular screw and then you have a kind of pressured on uh, screw. So you can just remove that by adding some pressure to it before you remove it. You also want to make sure that you take the circuit board connectors off. Be sure to note which way it goes. At the end of the video, you'll see that I was kind of having trouble figuring it out. Once you remove it, there's pretty much the whole circuit board in all its glory. As you guys can tell, mine's pretty old. The air vents are pretty worn out as well. And what I'm holding right now is just a heat shield tap for the courtesy light so that way the plastic doesn't burn. Now that we have everything out of the car, we're able to fully diagnose what's going on with the circuit board. As you guys can tell, one of the bulbs is up. And I did notice that my clock may not be working because part of the copper that gives the signal to the clock is detached. I don't know if it just got cut off or someone might've been messing with it. There are particles of the circuit board there. So I think it might've melted. There might've been a mall a malfunction and it burnt or something, but I may have to switch the circuit board to make sure the clock works. In other news, that's actually a good thing because that means that the clock may actually be working and I don't have to remove it or detach it or anything. I also just wanna point out how I am planning on cutting the bezel. Essentially the square or the rectangular spot that you see there fits perfectly with the radio that I bought. Now I just have to cut where the round buttons were. I just have to cut pretty much all aligning it to the space that it's there already. So it shouldn't be too much of a difficult problem. I think the radio will fit just fine. I think it'll give the car a different look. Now, to start unscrewing out the circuit board from the bezel, you're gonna grab a wrench or whatever you can. The screws are very small and I, I couldn't figure out exactly the size, so I had to kind of do it manually. But essentially there's four of them. There's one on each side, each corner pretty much that hold everything together. So it's not something too difficult, just be patient, don't break anything and you'll, you'll be fine. I do wanna point out that before removing the whole gauge cluster from the bezel, there is a small screw that's inside the clock's, I guess, turner. So you have to remove that before removing the whole thing. And yes, you will break the clock's uh, turner if you don't remove that little screw. As you can tell, it's right in the middle of everything. So make sure you're careful. Don't forget this step. I try to kind of do it by force and I almost broke everything. So just be careful. Once you remove it, everything comes off and you can see the gauges in all its glory. As you can tell, there's a plastic layer, uh, glass, plastic glass, and there is a tap for your fuel gauge. There's a tap for your belts, your seat belt, uh, pretty much just warning lights. Uh, but everything is all together. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tape everything together on the gauge cluster and that way I don't lose anything. And then I'm gonna set that to the side. All right, next stop is removing the air vents. And as you guys can tell, I barely have any air vents here. Both of them are pretty bad, but essentially they're just being held by two taps on the sides. And you don't have to remove the one in the middle. They'll come out by pressure. So just remove the two taps on the side, as you guys can tell, and they will come out Pretty fairly easy. I do wanna replace them for new ones as it does make the dash or the bezel just look so old, but I I just simply didn't order them. So I should have thought about doing that before I did this whole thing. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it as it is and call it a day. I don't use the AC as often. I don't drive the car right now because it is extremely hot in Houston. And for those of you guys that have Corvettes, you guys know that these are heating machines. So I don't drive it quite as much in this hot heat summer. So for those reasons, I'm not too worried about the air vents. Back in the car, as I mentioned, that's the dash without the bezel. The radio is almost about to come out. I removed the circuit board. Make sure you mark it because you will get confused. Uh, I also removed the dome light, as you guys can tell. And now I'm, removed to, I'm ready to remove the antenna and the cables behind it. Now, for this job, it is a little bit difficult as the cables are not that long and it's separated into three different categories. But once you're able to remove it, it becomes very easy. I will show you guys how the cables look in the back. I also wanna point out how big this radio is. This thing is like 20 pounds and uh, it didn't even have CD. But yeah, there's the connectors. It looks like it's a one connector type, but it's actually three separate ones. Alrighty, so here's the 
connection in all its glory. As you guys can tell, there's a little bit of cables around it. You have a black terminal, you have a skin color terminal, and then you have a blue terminal. The blue and the skin color both pertain to the rear speakers and the front speakers, and then the black one is for power. I actually posted this picture here so you guys can get an idea of what each one pertains to. I also found this really weird piece here just kind of hanging out. I think it was holding the radio in place, but if you guys know what this is, please do let me know. All right, here's the radio in all its glory. As you guys can tell, this is a tiny radio and the cables are pretty well laid out. You have two cables. You have the white one, which pertains to the speakers. And then you have the black one, which pertains to power. You also have a fuse, just in case anything happens, which I think is pretty, pretty cool. But it's extremely light. This thing is very, very light, very little. So I don't think I'm gonna have too much trouble installing it. You guys can tell the difference in radios. It's massive. I don't even know how the bracket or the weird thing that I had holding the radio in place was for, but this radio is huge. So you guys can tell here's just a little size comparison. All right, guys, so I'm over here reading on my little booklet and it says that on the radio that the white and white black, these two right here, these are the front left speakers. Well, uh, gray and gray black are the right front speakers and I guess that would make these two. Green and green black, your rear left speaker rear right speaker so this is kind of how it goes now looking at my car it's fairly easy that this one is the rear speaker because it's going all the way to the back and i'm assuming these two are for the right one and there's two are for the left one or vice versa and then these two because of the way it's laid out you have one going onto the twitter over here and another one going onto the twitter over there now those tweeters are also plugged in to the speakers that I have on the foot wells. So these are for the front speakers, which means that this black one over here is your power. Now, my concern is that I have two yellow wires, one black wire and one gray wire. And on the new plug, I have one yellow wire, one black wire, one red wire, and then I have an antenna wire which could plug in if you have a power antenna. It literally says it over here. So I have three, oh, wait, 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 wait. That means that black ground right here, the gray one could be the red, oh, shit, no. Yeah, we'll be right back in about five minutes, guys. <laughs> so quick thing to note, guys, I have a terminal kit as well to use in this radio installation. So I have all the different plugs and connections that I can use. I also have the tool that I'm gonna be using to make a proper cut and a proper installation. That way there's no cables exposed or anything. So here is the wiring. And it's not as bad as it seemed, but there's a lot to it. So let me go ahead and explain. On the new radio, you're gonna find a white cable with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight different cables. Green belongs with green, white belongs with white, uh, purple with purple, gray with gray. Essentially, you're looking at the green cables are both for the left rear speaker. The, I'm sorry, yes. Then you have the white and white going to the right far side of the car, so the rear side. And then you have the purple and the gray both matching to the left and the right front speakers. So that's very easy. Now, obviously in this new setup, you have a white, cable for example with a white cable with a black line so those are the different polarities make sure you're connecting them correctly luckily for me if you look at the back cables both have different colors so this one has a blue and a dark blue which i was able to match to this blue and dark blue colors and and so then i knew exactly which uh speaker i was looking at to connect you connect one wrong then you run the the, the problem of maybe not having the rest sound equally or it just doesn't sound the same or the bass might not be kicking up as well so there's a few different problems it's not going to destroy your speakers or anything it's just not going to sound properly now here's where things got a little bit complicated for me so the the power cable has 
a couple of cables. So you have a black one, which is pretty standard, is ground. Then you have a red one, a yellow one, and a blue one. So that's pretty good. Now, the original one, let me see if I can find it. There it is. So this is the original one. So you have two yellow ones. Then you have a gray one and a black one. And that's where things got kind of complicated for me. But what I ended up figuring out is one of the yellow ones, and I cut them for like this for a reason, the long one is for the antenna. The short one is for power. The black one is ground. And the gray one is for the lights. So for the lights on the car, I didn't plug that one in. And the reason for that is because I tested the lights without it and they work just like they would normally. So I'm not sure if that's just an extra cable that new power outlets don't come with, but it just seemed unnecessary. So I went ahead and taped that off and that was it. Here's one thing that I did that I'm not sure that it's fully correct. I went ahead and added the right one. The black one obviously plugged it in with uh, the ground. Uh, so that's the ground. The antenna, the, the and then the two powers, the ACC and the power, are both all three together connecting to the main outlet for the car. I also spoke to a guy at CJ Sounds. I'll link uh, his information down below. And he mentioned that that is very common on old cars that are kind of having new setups where the cables don't match and then you have extra cables or you're missing cables and you have to add a connection. Luckily in my case, I don't have to. I'm curious as to see how the dash is gonna look with the lighting and everything, but I didn't touch any of that. I don't think it has any relevance to it. So let's, let's run this back again. The white plug goes to your speakers and each speaker is color coded. Very, very easy. You even have a little list over here that shows you uh, where each speaker is. And I'm just gonna leave the camera like this for a couple of seconds so you can snap a picture of it. And so that tells you that you know, each, each, where each cable goes to whatever speaker it goes to. So that's, you know, pretty self-explanatory. But the power differs on each model car, each model year. So you might have to run, because this one said that this was the antenna, but this didn't work for anything. I mean, this was pointless. Um, so you might have to run separate cables to separate places, and then obviously test it out at the end. I tested it out and it works perfectly. So I'm very excited about that. I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a little demonstration of how it works. So I have the radio plugged in. Let's go ahead and give it a crank and test it out. And again, I have not fixed the timer or anything. That's on AM. Let's see the source. Uh, audio. Radio. Okay, it is. Oh crap, I changed it to Bluetooth. Okay, Oxane radio FM so it takes a little time to kick in and then when it kicks in there's your radio so you can crank the volume up you can lower it but um but as you guys can tell the radio does work I did plug in the antenna it does make a difference when it's looking for signal it allows me to get more channels than without the antenna plugged in but that's pretty much it it actually works perfectly i tested out the bluetooth already it sounds really good it definitely gives out a better noise this buzz audio definitely kills it i'm sorry uh as it gave the car a way better noise and it just it doesn't look so out of place i'm gonna go ahead now and start on the next part which is fixing the dash to make sure that it fits that radio in it all right so on the second point we have to do is make sure that we cut accordingly here i do have a pretty much kind of like priest pre-cut, pre if you will. Uh, yeah, so pretty much I have to cut exactly around the circles over here and right here. And that would give me pretty much a perfect measurement to make sure that I can add this together. I also have the brackets over here to make sure that the radio doesn't move from its place. And so, and then I have the radio here, which we tested it out and it works really well. So that's gonna go right over here. Hopefully I don't put it the wrong way, but that's essentially how it's gonna look. I don't think it looks too bad, actually. I, I hate ruining this console because this has a lot of history to it. And uh, I hate it, I just, I hate the radio more. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. Please don't judge me. <laughs> Full disclosure, those who know me that have been watching the channel for, uh, for a while now know that I pride myself on the latest and greatest tools. So. 
here's a Dremel. I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting with a Dremel and see how this goes. Hopefully I don't chop my fingers off and hopefully this thing doesn't burn uh, to its crisp. And uh, there's a lot of hopes involved in this. But yeah, let's get started. All right, what do you guys think? Not too bad. And so far, it doesn't fit. So I'm gonna have to cut more. <laughs> Let's get on with the other side. Oh, but this goes in the back, so. I might be able to wing it actually. So, all right, let's continue with the other side. All right, guys, well, that wasn't scary at all. I just burned myself with hot melting plastic a couple of times, but. Okay, the measurements are pretty, pretty good. Okay, let's see this again. Yeah, I definitely need to cut just a tiny bit more up top and we should be set to go. So let's do this. Perfect guys, first try, haha. <laughs> First try, first try. I didn't, even, I didn't even flinch on this one. This was just perfect from the get-go. All right, let's continue with the installation. And this has to go right over here. Come on. All right, so far so good. As you guys can tell, everything fits perfect. There's a bit of a gap in between, but I don't think with the case you'll be able to see it. So that, I'm kind of calm for that. I just want to see how this stays in place. And then your brackets are to pretty much hold everything in place. But because this doesn't weigh a lot, I actually feel like I could just put some silicone and call it today. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna go ahead and bother with all the brackets and stuff. Judge me if you want to guys, but I just, I'm gonna do it that way. Uh, all right, let's make sure that our area is clean. And uh, let's start installing this accordingly. Mm, let's clean. Let's clean these glasses a little bit too. Just a tiny bit. There we go, perfect. Now, I'm not gonna clean these ones because I don't wanna mess them up like I did last time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of leave it there. We have a low, low fuel tag here. And then we also have a one that says fasten seat belts. Both of those lights don't work, so I'm not sure what to do as far as you know fixing them. I added some buffs to them, but they still won't work, so I don't know what to do. But, uh, okay. Okay, now, instead of putting this thing separately, I'm just gonna go ahead and clean it once again. And I'm gonna put it all together at once, so that way nothing moves, nothing is out of the position it was in when I first removed it. So let's go ahead and do it. Always have some double sided tape handy and never forget your garden scissors, best thing in the planet. So, what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and start sticking this so that way it doesn't move ever again. Mm, that's good. Boom, perfect. This is how it should look. Great. Okay, let's continue. I've been doing this for maybe four hours already. So it is good to take your time for sure. These, these things take a while. So if you rush, you run the risk of breaking things. As you guys can tell over here, it kind of just burnt 
because the, the plastic is off and then the cable snapped. Yeah, I think that might have been a problem. I think I might just have to get a new motherboard. As you guys can tell, the rest of the copper is fully covered up until the terminals, but this one's fully exposed. And as you guys can tell, there's a bit of plastic just kind of deteriorated or melted. So I think there was a problem there and that might be causing this bulb not to work. Um, the plug might actually be working just fine. It's just the fact that this thing is broken off or snapped off. So we're gonna look into that later on, but for now, let's continue installing this. All right, so now that we have that done, it took like a million hours and my phone died and everything in my life kind of died a little bit more. We are now able to put the little itty bitty screw that we had earlier, which is this one, into the clock. So let's go ahead and get that one put in there. And it's just pretty much a screw. In. All right, so we have that done too. Now we can put everything back in the car to get, oh, air conditioning. So I don't know what to do with these things, guys. These things are just pointless. I don't even use the air conditioner that much. As a matter of fact, I never even used it. So I'm actually just going to not worry about this right now. All right, so I just find out this. So this one has a thicker part and then a smaller part. If you look into the console, you have a thicker part in this side and a smaller part on this side, which means that there's one that goes for the right hand and one that goes for the left hand. It's not one size fits all. So make sure you look at that before. And then this part is hollow, which means this little one goes in between like this. So make sure that you are careful with that and not force it. You might break the machine apart. The, not the machine thing, the, the dash, the console. Now this one should go here. Interesting. There we go, now they're both moving independently and I'm guessing this part, let's see. Well, the only thing I can say is that this mechanism is very stupid and it should not be like that. I didn't build a car, so let's put this, this is just way, this is like over engineering. This is worse than my other car actually. Like over engineering the crap out of this. But, but ending product, let's go ahead and install it to see how it looks. Let's start plugging everything back together. I did say there was one cable over here that was kind of missing. Oh, here it is. It's the antenna, so let's go ahead and take that one off. And guys, before I plug everything in, I'm gonna go ahead and switch all those little black tape coverings that I did for the cables, those are just temporary. I'm gonna go ahead and redo each one of them to make sure that it's correctly done. And then sometimes these, uh, these terminals are way too long for these terminal kits. So just make sure you cut them. So what I'll do is I'll cut them, I'll show you guys. I'll just cut it just a tiny bit. And then I'll refold it, put it in the terminal. You don't want the cable to show but you also don't want the cable too long to where it's exposed on the other side because you're gonna have the other side with this cable, right? So let's tie this side first and then we're gonna test it out. So that way it doesn't come out. The tool that I have literally tells you how to tie each color, so red, blue, and yellow, so that way you don't cut it or you don't damage the cable inside. And then you do the same with the other side. So let's put this side in here. So this is how they're supposed to look, the right ones. You don't want them to look like this. So it's a tedious job, it's tedious work, but it's, it's work that's well done. So make sure you do it this way. All right guys, now that you have every single one with the terminals put in correctly, make sure there's no wire that's exposed, make sure that everything's plugged in correctly. As I mentioned, white pertains to speakers, black pertains to power. 
and you can go back to my video and check exactly how I did it. It works for me. So I am sure that it will work for you. I just noticed I just peeled this, so I just have to redo it. One thing after the other one, guys. One thing after the other one, Jesus Christ. All right, guys, now that we're checking, make sure that everything's accordingly plugged in. Keep in mind that we have to plug the main. Crap, how does this go? in the main motherboard all right she's plugged in let's try to hide all the cables in for just a minute <sighs> all right we are almost done so let me just focus this just a tiny bit okay let's put this thing on there we go now we're gonna crank up the car and see if we get any noises Make sure that the gauges work. So let's try. Okay, fast and see those works. Let's see the battery works. Battery works. Fuel works. Oil press works. I gotta turn the car on to see if the if the temperature works. But other than that, everything works properly. The radio seems to be working. Let's make sure and put some Bluetooth. Not not Bluetooth, but radio for now. See if we get any noise from it. Oh, there we go. Touch your speakers. Touch your speakers to make sure that it works properly. And if it does, then we are good to go. So uh, the clock's still not working, but um, everything else seems to work. And generator light works properly. Fast and simple is actually turned on, which was crazy, but it turned on. So let's go ahead and put everything back together. Let's put the courtesy light on and then we're gonna call it a day for now. Oh, and by the way, if you guys can hear that, the antenna works as well, which is really cool. And as I said before, guys, take your time. There's no rush in this. I've learned the hard way that if you rush, you're gonna break things. And obviously you don't wanna do that. Now make sure that everything's plugged in correctly. You never, you, you just don't wanna make sure that something that's important to the car snaps off or breaks. Oh, you know what? We forgot to test out the lights. Let's test them out right now. Make sure that the headlights, the, the, the gauge cluster lights work. Fast and seat belts work, that's amazing. That's a new one. All right, let's test out. Boom, they work. Amazing. Dome light works. Okay, so we're good, so let's continue. Let's start with the side ones, then the top ones, and then we're gonna do the ones in the bottom, okay? Now we're gonna put the remaining two, and remember, these ones go under the dash pretty much. So these ones go right over here and right over here. So let's do those. And then I goes here, and I, I can set this up after. Yeah, 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 okay. So we're good so far. Let's give one last test to make sure that everything got connected together and everything's good. I also wanna see that new light that I just got the fast and seat belts. Ha ha! How nice is that? Let's test out the lights. Work properly, we got, we got all working properly. I won't be able to use things just yet, so. Seems like everything's good here. Let's just stop the music. Amazing, so we got static, which is good. Let me try to see if I can put a session real quick. Yes, we're good. All right, guys, everything's good to go. I think we, we finally did it. Let's turn this off. 
Let's finish installing the panel. This one's loose still, so let's finish installing this one and we can call it a day. We can call it a day, my friends. All right, guys, seems like we're finally done after like four hours of excruciating pain and work. We were able to get everything installed, tested everything out, make sure the car actually turned on, which it did. So we're, we're finally done. I'm very excited. Everything came out the way we're supposed to. The dash looks amazing. It doesn't look too out of place, which I was very happy about. And it looks really, really cool. Like I said, it took me about four hours to get everything installed. Um, I think once I figure out the cable colors and the coordination for each cable, then it just became a little bit of an easier job. I did took a little bit of time kind of cutting and measuring, make sure that, well, measuring, but making sure that the stereo or, I'm sorry, not the stereo, but they or the radio fit in its place correctly and there was no kind of gap in between or anything. So that took a little bit of time and effort. But other than that, everything else came perfectly. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know down below. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.